y'all been to the live shows and if you haven't been to the live shows and stuff before y'all gotta know that you know what i'm saying it is so much motherfucking fun who was this down here talking about oh craig think he got stopped baby girl i was i was craig, voted be, you, i was voted best dressed at hampton university craig, you are, <laughs> craig it's about the show huh? girl these kids are just trying it today girl, well, listen, here's, girl, i mean sat down here comfortably girl here's the thing girl craig if you feel some type of way about them girls girl you get what i'm saying you have the computer over here girl just go to the three dots and block i'm not gonna block them children I'm not going to block them, but go ahead. So we have a show. It's coming up April 24th at City Winery. You get your tickets from fagtalk.com yes. and purchase your tickets. You can purchase for any date, even though April 24th is the first show. Yeah. If you're coming in August or July, you can get your ticket for whichever date you're going to come. Yeah. And we, we have a good show lined up. We have like really been sitting around talking about it. And we, we, have, we actually have a, another meeting probably this weekend or like, how we're gonna really bring more, you know, more excitement to the show, even though it's this what it is right here, right? But to also make it like interactive, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know. some of the things that we've done together that we want to bring, like like when we do, what we used to do during the pandemic. Do you want the smoke? Do you want the smoke? But it's just that we be we be indulging in so much, <laughs> but we don't get to it. We don't. We don't get it. To be it be so much. We be having so much fun. Yeah. It's just like so much freaking fun. It seems like as soon as we sit down, it's like the shit. Be the like, shit is over. So here's what I'm thinking that we're gonna do, y'all. I'm thinking, Craig, we're probably gonna have to start the show thirty minutes early. So like seven thirty. Yeah. Instead of starting at eight, we're probably gonna have to start the show time. It's gonna have to promptly be at seven thirty. Yeah. And then so that we can actually get a full right, like a full time with the right, girls because. Right. We don't get the opportunity to have a full time with y'all because because by the time Miss Mary bitch, get out there with her little walker and girl, then you come I, 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 now you see now, see mama this is why I told you don't cook this fag no need you see as soon as he get a chance to claw you in your thigh by the time she got there with her remote control car and then you get up there and you talk to Mo for a few minutes girl we it's already an hour gone as soon as you so, look mama <laughs> soon as this punk sit down he wants to claw you in your thigh Smile girl. Face. <laughs> That's right. Smile in your face and all the while they be eating your plates. They oh, backstab. Backstab. <laughs> you tired bitch, you. As <laughs> soon as you had the opportunity to claw Miss Mary in her back. I was voted for as best dress and I won. Here she goes, still reading to people about her dress code. <laughs> Girl, we talking. And she done claw Miss Mary in her back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this Essence magazine. No, girl. <laughs> you, better, you better clear this up, Miss Mary, because she's texting me right now, girl. Yes, she, yeah, she, you see her bubbles. You don't see her bubbles, girl. Yeah, see, wait, get back over there. Miss Mary's bubbles. Miss Mary's texting me right now. Okay. Uh, my mom want me to send a message out to the Hinton family, which is mine. The Hinton family and Tony with the loss of their mother, Laureen Hinton. This is my cousin. Yes. That's what Miss Mary want me to do. Did you want to do a moment of silence? Uh-uh. Oh. Because that we need to get, we need, I need you to get back off of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, girl, I was trying to. No, girl, you had to claw Miss Mary on her back, girl, as soon as you sat down, girl. Oh, <sighs> like Essence clawed us in our backs. Listen, Essence ain't never really been about the gays. How do you know this? They want to talk true? about everything except the queer experience, the black queer experience. Well, because I have friends at least five that occupy, no, you ain't gonna put that up. <laughs> I have five friends who occupied very important positions over there at the Essence Magazine. Is this the one? No, I say it, not the streets. <laughs> so is this the one? <laughs> Let me see. No. So I don't have a sign. Yeah, you don't need one. <laughs> so, so anyway, like they, none of them work there now. So I'm okay saying all of this. But they have really important positions over there. So I've been to Essence at least maybe four or five times. I've never paid for a concert ticket because they, they occupied really good positions, right? And even in terms of like Uber, like we didn't even pay for Uber because Essence paid for the Uber. You know what I'm saying? Like I was with friends who worked there. And I wrote a play called A Day in the Life. You mentioned Jasmine Bonet the other day. When I was trying to promote that play, I was trying to get a blurb in Essence magazine and they were like, oh, no, we're not talking about the gay stuff. 
They weren't interested in that. Well, and I then mean, fast forward mm-hmm. when I put out my first book, which is about me being a fag. Uh-huh. They didn't want to talk about that. And the fag over top of the uh over that department, because they had a section. If you all read Ma- Essence magazine, they used to have a section in their magazine where it was like it was called the Writer's Corner or something like that, where they highlighted like black authors, black writers, and they would talk about the book. That fag would not put my shit over there. And then you said when they wouldn't talk about you when we did the reality show. They didn't talk. They they told my PR Pam, Pamela Broussard. So you know we ain't lying. They told Pamela Broussard no. They're not having any conversations about the T.S. Massett experience. And I'm like, well, I am the first black transgender. This is, and, and this is black history. But you're a fag and you're a trainee. Yeah. So I'm like, well, why wouldn't you, why would we not talk about uplifting, uplifting the things in black and black history? Because they didn't think their audience wanted to hear it. And I really think that's why these TikTokers, these black influencers are having issues getting them to back them and to use them to promote Essence Festival or whatever else they have. Ray Monte. So y'all didn't, y'all didn't want to use that young man? What is he, 34? Excuse me. He has a huge following on TikTok. I don't know about on Instagram, but it seems his power is on TikTok. And every I follow him on TikTok and all of his videos go viral. And like he just did like a birthday trip. And instead of them using him to like cover the story and it was just, it was just a mess. It's just a mess. And like they'll they'll get all of these other influencers to do stuff who may not have the the impact, but they they try to say that it wasn't really, he wasn't really, uh, he, he wasn't really a representative for their audience, which is mostly black women because it's a magazine with it. Most of their readership is black women. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and they sorry, tried to Craig, say that he was, uh, uh, just to let you know, uh, before oh, they say he's 24, he's 24, he's 24. Yeah. So okay. I wanted you to know that. And so it's like their, their readership is mostly black women. And so they're like, oh, well. He thinks that it's because he's ghetto and da da da. I le- tend to think it's because you are a fag, and I say that in the best way. Okay. Well, I know mine was definitely because I was the fag, mm-hmm. a trainee. Because it's just like, why wouldn't you talk about this? Like, why wouldn't you? Like, this is when my show needed all the, the the grabs that it could from all the black audience. You know what right. I'm saying? And like, this is on a major network. We were talking about issue. Like, my mom. It's not just a fag show. Like, my, my mother's there on the show. Like, mm-hmm. Legra's there on the show. Like, you know, we were we were we were tackling so many issues. But it was they, a conversation that, that 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 the black community and the black family needed to see. Yes, you needed know? to hear. And so that's and I was hurt that I don't know if you guys think back for those mob people, my Maddie mob people um, that have been following me for the years. Remember when me saying like there were there were big entities that decided that they weren't going to say anything about it, like they had nothing, weren't going to say anything about it. Mm-hmm. And and here's how God fixes them. What they do? <laughs> he put me on Beyonce album. And so when God fixed it for that to happen, they they had to talk about all the queer people that were on Beyonce's mm-hmm. album because that's that because was that's the, what the album was really. Yeah, it, it was a huge it, it's a huge album, and yeah. so that put me in that space right there. Like God always made them make all those people that didn't want to talk to spit it right in their face. Like mm-hmm. I'm a part of popular culture. Whether people then here here we go back on me again. Go ahead. I'm a part of popular culture. Whether people want to acknowledge that or not, or whether people want to big up me for that or not or whatever you I want to see me or, or you know or whatever bubble you want to put me in. I don't give a fuck where you put me. I'm a part of popular culture mm-hmm. that moves things around in the culture. So you going you going to motherfucking see me. Right. You ain't going to have no choice but to see me. I'm in everything and everywhere. Right. I'm your fave's fave. And so it's going to happen. And when I, and like and it, and when it rolled back around I just was like, I wanted to bring it up in the face. Like, well, damn, y'all didn't. Miss Mary in the comments. <laughs> you know I love you, Miss Mary. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you said don't start. Fred. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's all right because I know Miss. So, you know, the, the the crazy part about that type of shit. It's just like 
I wanted to bring that to it, the attention when yeah. I when I had the opportunity to. Yeah. I wanted to be like, well, y'all ain't um kind of the same thing I did that I wanted to do when I was at the Glad Awards. Mm. We talking? Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Craig, we talking? Uh, Cause you know they ain't diverse over there, no way. Oh. Craig, is we talking? Craig, we talking? You know I tear them up every chance I get. Are you talking today? Some. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead and share what you're going to share, and then I'll fill in the blanks. Some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, because we want them to we want them to acknowledge fag talk yeah, like, at some day. point. But right, they may right. not, because it might be too powerful for It, it for may. Them. And it might be too, you know, it might be too crass. Right. Now, remind me to come back to Essence, because I'm not done with y'all. Oh, I'm not either. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Same thing with Glad. Uh-huh. Um, when I got in the movie Bros. Uh-huh. Now I've been a trailblazer in our community. Wait, you've been a worker. A trailblazer. Because uh, you are LGBTQ what? A royalty. Oh, okay. You see how I live. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you live? In a castle. <laughs> you didn't ask me where it was at. Where Where is it, girl? On a hill. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your castle, girl? With a swimming pool and an iron gate. <laughs> And an iron front door. And a motherfucking gissa. Yes, indeed. For the maid. <laughs> Bitch. For the domestics. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Ask me again. Where you live, girl? In a castle. Where is it, girl? On a hill. <laughs> and what kind of door? <laughs> an iron gate. And Bitch. where do the, the, the domestics live? In the back. <laughs> where they live? In the back. In the Rosa Parks section. In the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Big girl. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Just so that we're aware. Uh huh. You know, oh and here's the thing I did, and, and, and doing all of the, I think they don't <laughs> like people that don't, that don't, don't do the things the orthodox way. Uh huh. Because the orthodox way consists of needing them. C come on now. This is why we have the blog problem. This is why the blog's The black problem. blog problem. Yeah. Because the orthodox way is needing them to assist you in your rise to start them. Mm -hmm. I've never needed them to assist me in any motherfucking thing. You found me because I made you see me. Oh, I heard that. You found me because I demanded, bitch, that you listen to me. Because mm -hmm. if it was up to them, I would be, my voice would be smothered. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't, and my, my voice would be smothered, my presence would be minimum, and I wouldn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And so because they, they've never been able to control the narrative, they spin it mm -hmm. and try to make me public enemy number one. Don't like black women. Mm -hmm. And watch how we'll take this, this, this quote from her and this quote from another person and make it like this, this too, like mm -hmm. it's against black women. I see them for the works that they do. I have never or never will need them to live in a castle. On a hill. On a hill <laughs> with a swimming pool and an iron gate <laughs> and service quarters in the back. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mm. And so Glad finally got, I finally got an invite to Glad. And, and the places and the things like that or whatever. And I got it because I was a part of bros. Mm -hmm. I might have had maybe 10 lines, six, mm -hmm. six to 10. Mm -hmm. Bros, Universal Pictures. We thank, thank and love Universal Pictures. Thank, love, and all. I love, you know, I love still going to that mailbox and gathering up my check. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it's spin around somewhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> but movie that flop. Correct. <laughs> There was no reason that out of all these years in my existence and the things that I spoke out against and the things that went viral and how that that, that, that was the only time. Mm -hmm. They didn't even say a word to me during the, the T.S. Madison experience. Mm -hmm. That that was now, now, now when the T.S. Madison experience came. Oh, I'm telling so much tea. Oh, oh well, <clears throat> this is my show. When the T.S. Madison experience came out, now they were the first people over there to make sure that the things were running. In, in accordance to the God bylaws and God bylaws of mm -hmm. the LBGTQ. Uh huh. And I did make a statement then, like, well, I haven't heard from y'all in all the years of my existence. And now, 
Y'all want to slide over here that it's a TV show? And now? Right. Oh, okay. And then Essence, when Beyonce come along, and now y'all want to interview? Bandwagoning. Now it's popular. So I wasn't good enough to come in the house before. Mm -hmm. But when you had no other choice, bitch, when I let y'all know that I don't need to come in the house, <laughs> I'm going to pitch a tent outside and send smoke up to the air so high, bitch, that you ain't going to have no other, other, other choice but to motherfucking see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what Amanda Seals has been saying. But before we dive into that, what Ray Mon so this f whole fallout with Ray Monte and this Essence thing, it kind of brought Cardi B into it. They got the fighting and carrying on all over on Twitter about it because he, he basically was referencing or comparing how she entered the music industry, even though he doesn't rap or anything like that, but he referenced how she was and still is regarded as ghetto and you know this, that, and the third. But people are allowing her now to grow and build and do but again, maybe it's because she's popping now. You know what I mean? And they, they just want to bandwagon. And so she kind of took offense to it because he called her ghetto and just this, that, and the third. And he, Remonte? Yeah. Called Cardi called, B? Well, he wasn't, he was, he was saying how she was regarded as ghetto when she came into the industry. And he's saying maybe that's why they're not accepting me because they see me as ghetto, da, 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 da. And so she jumped in and said, well, why am I even being referenced in a lot of the fags? got on, on his back too and we're like, well, why are you even trying to compare yourself to her? And you know, like. No, it's not about comparing yourself. To, hold on, let's talk about it, bitch, since we there. <clears throat> Cardi B was ghetto when she motherfucking goddamn jumped into the game. And, and here's the thing, that's, why, that's, the reason why they, that's what the reason why they accepted her because she was a, a light skin, excuse me, she was a Spanish woman doing what black bitches do and instead of letting the black bitches through, they'll let a Spanish girl through. Well, that was kind of what he said, too, because of his complexion, her complexion. Maybe that's why they were allowing that's her. That's the way they do. That's, what they, that's, what, that's mm -hmm. how they do. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. That's why they still sitting over there trying to find a space for me. We're trying to figure out. Madison, we're trying to figure out where, where you would fit. But you can, find, you can find everybody that's mimicking me, talking like me, looking motherfucking weave hair weave to the floor you can find everybody else a space except the originator you can find everybody else a space except the originator of the situation where they borrow these things from mm. Same way they do with the with the with the cunts that act like the fags. You can't find the fags no job, but you can find a job for every every cunt that's over there saying, "Yes, what's he, honey? Yes, doc, doc." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better sh you better shake it. You, be you better shake it. I don't have anything personal against Cardi B. Because I, because me and Nikki are friends, I don't have, I don't have no, It's just the, these are the facts. I, when I watched her rise, I was like, there were so many ghetto bitches just like her. So many ghetto big nail girls, big body girls. So many this that 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 ain't get the opportunity. So just to play devil's advocate, do you always think? Because I think sometimes it's easy for us as black people to say, oh well, it's because it's a colorism thing. Yes, for sure, it is sometimes that. But is it always that? I, I, I'm wondering if perhaps maybe she was a little more marketable than what is what is what is more marketable? Or maybe she was more talented, like what, somebody saying Jocelyn. What is more marketable? Or, or just more talented? Is, is light more marketable than dark? No, I'm not saying that. No, you're not. But right. we're talking about it. Yeah, we're we're here now. Right. I mean, we're just asking questions. Sometimes it is the light I mean, if, you're, if you're going by what you see out in the. Uh, out in like some media or entertainment, light light skinned is more marketable than dark. Dina yeah. Jones. 
Effie White. This story goes, this story. Yeah. It transcends. Right. It goes back. And again, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying whether Cardi is talented or not. I'm just saying. This really ain't got nothing to do with Cardi. Right. Like somebody in the comments said, but Cardi also came with this television uh, popularity. Which she did, which, you know was, which, which also the popularity became from all the ghetto stereo t stereotype ways that she was portraying on the show. Mm -hmm. It came from the, the it came from that. There were six bitches on the show that's ghetto just like her. Right. <laughs> but see, the thing too is like I, my. I guess what I'm saying is I kind of struggle with when we single out like a J Lo or we single out like a Cardi. You, you know, we say, well, you know, when the black girl tried to do it. Well, technically, they black too. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? They black? Afro Latina. Okay. If we're gonna get into the diaspora. That's who we at? We in the diaspora right now? The African <laughs> diaspora. That's who we at. They still black now. I don't give a damn what they call themselves. Would what would, would, would ask them if they black though. I, well, yeah, no, that's a different Now that's how it that's how it really that's how you really ring it up, niece. <laughs> and they they just dropped up, they just picked up that, the That's boat. how this how we really ring it up. Ask them if they're black. Ask them if they're black mm. and they'll say no i'm a latina Did somebody say j-lo was afro latino ask them if they black <laughs> and that was the thing too somebody said cardi has never denied being black so i mean it could be a complexion thing but you know the the bottom line is essence as a black publication should not be discriminating just because somebody is quote unquote ghetto or because somebody is gay or because somebody is trans. But see, that is just kind of indicative of the problem in the black community in general and just how we, how we handle each other. There's, there's black straight people on one side, then you got black queer people on the other side. And then when you get to the queer side, you got the trans people over here, you got the butch queens over here, you got the D, you know what I'm saying? Then that's even more segmented and segregated. Segregated and you know what I mean? That's true.